In this webcast, we'll talk about the mechanisms of imine and enamine formation. Since we can write these mechanisms without introducing any new elementary steps, the power of mechanistic organic chemistry should become apparent, for we can write completely new mechanisms without introducing any new mechanistic elementary steps. Let's take a look at the reaction that generates the imine. The stoichiometry is shown at the top here, where we take a carbonyl like this cyclohexanone, this ketone, combine it with this primary amine, this one happens to be an aniline, in the presence of an acid catalyst to make the imine that's shown here with water as a byproduct. Now the reaction is carried out under acidic conditions. You can guess that we'll have positively charged intermediates along the way. And you can guess what the purpose of this acid catalyst is going to be. For in carbonyl chemistry, we typically see that protons make that carbonyl group a better electrophile. And that's exactly what happens here. The first step is a proton transfer where we protonate the carbonyl oxygen with our acid catalyst to generate the positively charged species that's shown here. This is set up to do a nucleophile addition to a polarized pi bond. The nucleophile will be our nitrogen from our aniline, and that will make the tetrahedral intermediate that's shown here. Now you can see the positive charges on nitrogen. We need to eliminate the elements of water from this tetrahedral intermediate, and so we can do that by making the hydroxyl a better leaving group. One way to make the hydroxyl a better leaving group would be to protonate it, and if we took one of the protons from that nitrogen, then that intramolecular proton transfer is going to get us all set up to do the beta elimination. And that's what happens next. Beta elimination to make that carbon-nitrogen double bond that we need with the loss of water generates the aminium cation here, and the mechanism is finished simply by returning that proton back to the pool ready to participate in another round of catalysis. Now let's look what happens when the primary amine is replaced with the secondary amine. In this case, we generate the enamine, and the stoichiometry of the reaction is shown at the top. Water is a byproduct. We use this secondary amine that's shown here, together with this aldehyde. Remember, at the alpha position of that aldehyde, we have carbon-hydrogen bonds. That position is sp3 hybridized carbon, and one of those hydrogens is going to contribute to the byproduct of water. The second hydrogen will come from the amine. The mechanism of this reaction is going to look an awful lot like the mechanism of imine formation until we get to the very end. And so the purpose of the acid is, as before, it's going to make the carbonyl a better electrophile. We'll begin the mechanism the same way. We'll protonate the carbonyl oxygen to make the positively charged species that's shown here. That enhanced electrophilicity is all set up to do a nucleophile addition to the polarized pi bond. Our secondary amine will be the incoming nucleophile. That generates the tetrahedral intermediate that's shown here. That tetrahedral intermediate needs to lose water. The hydroxyl group can become the leaving group that it needs to be. By protonating that oxygen, the proton will come intramolecularly from that positively charged nitrogen. Now we're set up to do the beta elimination. Just as before, we make the iminium cation. The iminium cation has the carbon-nitrogen double bond, but there's an important difference at this point. Notice that this iminium cation no longer has a hydrogen attached to nitrogen, and so the mechanism is stuck in the direction of making an imine, and something else has to take place. That something else is the loss of a proton from the alpha position. This hydrogen has an enhanced acidity because of the adjacent positive charge. So loss of the proton to make the carbon-carbon double bond, as you can see there, with movement of the pi bond onto nitrogen to make the lone pair on nitrogen, makes this enamine, the structure that you see there. And so in this webcast, what you were able to see is the power of mechanistic organic chemistry. Using elementary steps that you already knew, you were able to draw the mechanism of two completely new reactions.